Okay, today we're going to be working on lesson 6.1 in your Go Math book. Um, if you go ahead and open up to page 327, today's essential question is how can you use models to show equivalent fractions? So if we're looking for equivalent fractions, we know that they are equal or the same size. And even though they might be the same size, they may not look the, exactly the same, but they should be always the same size if they're equivalent fractions, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to read the problem. It says, Joe cut a pan of lasagna into third size pieces. He kept one third and gave the rest away. Joe will not eat his part all at once. How can he cut his part into smaller, equal size pieces? Okay. So, first of all, we look down here, and they've already given us a fraction of a whole piece. So we're going to imagine that this big rectangle is the lasagna, and that they've already um, cut it into three equal pieces. So one, two, three. The blue shaded part is going to be the part that Joe is getting. So we're going to look just at the piece that Joe is eating. First thing we're going to do. Um, Draw on the model to show how Joe could cut his part of the lasagna into two equal pieces. So we're just talking about Joe's part, which is just the blue part. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to make two equal pieces. I count down how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Half of eight is four, so I want to make sure that I have four on the top and four on the bottom so that they're equal. Okay. Over here, though, it says, suppose Joe had cut the original pan of lasagna into equal pieces of this size. So if he cut the whole pan of lasagna that way, that means I'm going to extend my line all the way across to the other pieces, too. How many pieces would there be in the whole pan of lasagna? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So what fraction of the pan is one piece? Right now, one piece would be one And then down here it says what fraction of the pan is two pieces? Well, two pieces is just two, but there's still six all together, so it's two, six. Okay. You can rename one-third as, well, one-third of the piece is still the same size as two, six. So one-third is equivalent to two, six. Okay, now for part B, what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to use the same problem. So the same idea with Joe, a pan of lasagna, and he's getting one third of it. So there's three equal pieces and one third is shaded for Joe. Okay, But this time it says, draw on the module to show how Joe could cut his part of the lasagna into four equal pieces. Okay, So now if I want four equal pieces, I can't give each one four, but I could do... one, two, three, four, or two in each makes four equal pieces, okay? Um, you can rename these four equal pieces as a fraction of the original pan of lasagna, okay? But if we're using the whole pan of lasagna, we have to make sure it goes all the way across. Okay? Suppose Joe had cut the original pan of lasagna into equal pieces of this size, so we cut each piece. How many pieces would there be? How many equal pieces? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There would be 12 equal pieces. What fraction of the pan is one piece? Well, it's 1 12. Okay. What fraction of the pan is four pieces? That would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 12. So, one-third, or the blue part, is the same as four-twelfths. So, one-third can be renamed as four-twelfths, okay? Fractions that name the same amount are equivalent fractions. So, in here, we found that one-third was the same as two-sixths, and we also found that one-third is the same as one, two, three, four, four-twelfths. Those are all equivalent fractions. One third is equal to two sixths, and two sixths is equal to four twelfths. Okay, 
Now we're turning over to page 328 and we're going to use what we did in the investigation on the previous page to draw some conclusions. The first thing that they asked us to do is to compare the models for one-third and two-sixths. Okay. How does the number of parts relate to the sizes of the parts? Okay. How does the number of parts relate to the sizes of the parts? So when we go back and look at our model for one-third and two-sixths, okay, that's this one up here, one-third had less pieces, right? Not only three equal pieces, and when I did six, there were six equal pieces, so that's more pieces, but each sixth is smaller than each third, okay? So if I'm going to draw some conclusions, I'm going to say on the other side that, um, let's see, the model for two-sixths has twice as many equal parts as the model for one-third. Because six pieces is two times as much as three pieces, so that's why it's twice as many. Okay. But they also want me to compare the sizes of the parts. So, um, I guess the si I could say and the parts for two six are half the size of the one thirds. So they're smaller. So it's double the number of parts, but half the size. The next question asks me to think about um, how the numerators are related to the denominators. So look at this. It says describe how the numerators are related and how the denominators are related in one-third and two-sixths. Okay, so if we look at the numerators, those are the numbers on top, one and two, and the denominators are three and six. Okay. Um, well, the first thing I notice is that one times two equals two and three times two equals six. So it's like we've doubled them each time, okay? So a whole divided into six has two times as many parts, because denominators are parts, So, so far we know that a whole divided into six has two times as many parts as a whole divided into thirds. So three times two is six. That's what we're saying. The parts are the denominators. Okay. And then I also know um, the numerator and denominator. And two six are both twice or double or two times the number, or I guess the numerator and denominator in one third. Okay, on the Think Smarter question, number three, we're going to now take what we've learned in the drawing conclusions from one and two to try to help explain another example of equivalent fractions. Okay, they want to know, does one-third equal three-ninths? And then they want us to explain. Well, what I've learned in the top part is that um, if I have more pieces than the 
pieces have to be smaller. So if I have thirds, those pieces are going to be bigger than ninths because nine is more than three. So nine is going to have to have smaller pieces if they're equal. The other thing I know is that if I have like two times as many in the numerator, I also have to have two times as many in the denominator. So on the, in this case, to get from one to three, it's not going to be one times two to get to three, but it would be one times three equals three. Okay. So in order to be equivalent, I think I have to do the same thing to the bottom. So I'm going to take the denominator of 3 and do the same thing, which was multiply by 3, to get 3 times 3 is 9. Did I get the right numerator and denominator for my equivalent fraction in the problem? Yeah, I did. I got 3 ninths. Okay? And so um, a fraction with a 9 in the de denominator has 3 times as many equal parts. If I were going to draw that, actually, let me just write it real quick. So a fraction with 9 in the denominator. Oops, I'm going to have to squeeze around my work here. Has 3 times as many equal parts as a fraction with three in the denominator. And if I were to draw a real quick picture of that, I'm just going to draw another grid. I'm going to put it in thirds, okay? A fraction with 9 in the denominator has 3 times as many equal parts as a fraction with 3. So if I want 9 equal parts, I have to take each third and divide it into 3 pieces. And I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 1 third is the same as 3 ninths. Okay, now in the make connections part at the bottom, we're going to use what we've learned about fractions or equivalent fractions to answer a real world problem. Okay, so I'm going to read the problem. It says Savannah has two fourths yard of ribbon and Isabel has three eighths yard of ribbon. How can you determine whether Savannah and Isabel have the same length of ribbon? Okay, so we want to know if two fourths is equal to three eighths or the same length. Okay, um, really quickly, they're giving us a little review here. It says the equal sign right here, and not equal um, to sign, show whether fractions are equivalent. Okay, so you've probably seen on the roads like a no U-turn sign, so it looks like that with a slash through it. Same thing in math, we use a equal sign with a slash through it to show that something's not equal. Okay, so here's what we're doing. Tell whether two-fourths and three-eighths are equivalent, right, equal or not equal. Okay, the first thing they want us to do is they want us to make a model for two-fourths, okay? Shade the amount of ribbon that Savannah has. Well, Savannah had two-fourths, so that would be one-fourth, two-fourths. There's a total of four equal pieces in our model, okay? For step two, if we want to see if they're equivalent, we need the same length of ribbon, so it should be the same length of, on both models, okay? But this time, we're not going to do fourths, we're doing eighths, because Isabel had three-eighths, so I had to divide this into eight equal pieces and then shade in three of them. Okay, so now I'm going to look at the lines. I'm going to think to myself, is 3 eighths the same as 2 fourths? And as long as I've drawn it the same size, it should be able to show me. When I draw my line up, is it the same? No, it looks like Isabel has less. Okay, so over here I'm going to put not equal to. Okay. All right, so what you're going to do is you are going to go on onto page 329, and you're going to use what we did with models to show equivalent fractions and to tell whether two fractions are equivalent or not. Okay, so go ahead and do the share and show on page 329. Make sure you at least get number two and number six done so we can grade those together.